If you are a real estate agent in 2020, then there is no denying the fact that Instagram has a powerful place in your overall social media strategy. With over 100 million users on the app in the US alone, it's safe to say you gotta be where the eyes are. So I wanted to share the first five things that I would be doing if I was just starting out on Instagram. And hey, be sure to stay till the end where I'll be sharing how to find my free resources on Instagram for real estate agents. Stay tuned. If we haven't met yet, my name is Stephanie Lugo, and if you're looking to grow your real estate business and have some fun while you're at it, you've gotta to subscribe to this channel where I share the latest in social media strategies for real estate agents. And be sure to hit that little bell icon to be notified every time I'm dishing new strategies for you here on YouTube. Since starting our real estate business almost six years ago, we have built our six-figure business using social media and primarily Instagram. Instagram is so important to our business that it has become one of our number one lead sources in terms of conversion, value of the clients, and how much we love working with these clients. And there's really nothing special about the way I've built this on Instagram. Any real estate agent can do this too. So oftentimes that I'm sharing strategies to real estate agents, they say, you know, Stephanie, what is someone like me to do if I've never really put any thought into Instagram regarding my real estate business? So here are the five things that I would tell you to do if you were just starting out from scratch with your Instagram for real estate journey. So step one is to look at your account, right? And this is probably the number one question I get is, Stephanie, do I need a personal or a business account? I'm here to tell you, it doesn't really matter, okay? If you already have an Instagram account and say it's a personal account where you already follow your friends and family, go ahead and stick with that account. Now, if you prefer, you can convert that to a business profile. You can also convert it back if you hate the business profile. The only thing that you get when converting to a business account is some extra features like viewing your analytics, right? So being able to see what kind of audience you have and when they're most likely to be on the app. All that is pretty important information to know, but not not totally necessary. You also have the ability to boost posts and create ads from within the app as well. Again, none of this is going to be do or die to your overall Instagram strategy, but you want to make sure that you go with whatever audience you already have. So most agents that I work with tend to already have a personal account where they have an audience. If that's the case for you, stick with it. If you're starting from scratch, it might be worth it just to start a business account and go from there. Now, the second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set up your perfect Instagram bio, okay? This is gonna be the first thing that people see when they go to follow you. And you want to very quickly and concisely explain who you are, what you do, and why you do it on the area where your bio is. So I have a free guide on how to build out your perfect Instagram bio that's actually linked below in the description. Don't go yet, you wanna make sure to watch the rest of this video, but if you haven't done this work, you might wanna spend some time using that guide to really get into the nitty gritty, but here's what you need to know. You need to have your full name and your brokerage information on your bio, right? We always wanna lead with compliance in mind. You might also wanna check with your broker to see if they have any rules regarding your social media presence to just make sure that you're compliant. But usually having the name of your brokerage's office on your bio is sufficient. You then wanna make sure that you have some details in that description. You get a set amount of characters and text that you can put in there. You don't have to go crazy with emojis. You don't have to go crazy with all the things that you can do with your bio. Just make sure that if somebody who has no idea who you are, if they fall onto your profile and they're trying to decide whether or not to follow you, they can within like five seconds understand exactly who you are and what you do just from that bio. But remember, I have the whole guide linked below. It's gonna be a lot easier to do it on your own time and get into the nitty gritty there. So check that out after this video. So the third step that you're gonna to wanna to do if you're starting your Instagram from scratch is plan out your first nine posts. Now again, if you already have an Instagram account and you've been posting some personal stuff for friends and family, you don't have to delete that. That's totally fine, just leave it. We're gonna kinda of start anew with a new strategy and you're going to plan your first nine posts to do that. Now, why nine posts? Well, most people, when they decide whether or not to follow you, they're going to scroll down just a little to get an idea of what you're all about. And that first nine posts on your profile is really going to convey 
who you are and what you're all about. And it's almost like giving a that potential follower a snapshot of what they can expect when they're following you. So you do wanna make sure that these are high quality images or video. You wanna make sure that they are high value posts with good captions and really sharing value with your potential audience in terms of buyers and sellers. And again, you know that I'm a big fan, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of sharing both personal and business related content. Because I, as I say, the thing that always makes real estate businesses successful is real people and real relationships. So don't be afraid to share a little bit of that personal side of, of your content. Now in that first nine posts, you should have your face your face, the money maker, showing up at least once in those first nine tiles. And you would do well to show up in your feed every three posts. That means every third post, at the minimum, you're gonna be putting your face on there. And I know it sounds scary if you're not used to being on this side of the camera, but remember, this is how we stand out from our competition. No one else has what you have right here, so make sure you're showing up in your feed so that people can get to know the real you and really feel that connection so that when it is time to reach out to a real estate agent, you are the right choice. Step four is you gotta start building your audience, and what better place to start than with your database? The secret of Instagram is to treat it like an extension of your database. So if you're starting from scratch, the first thing that I want you to do after getting your profile all buttoned up is go and make sure you're connected with everybody who already knows you, likes you, and trusts you. Okay, there are a couple of ways that you can do this right within the app in terms of connecting to your followers and friends on Facebook or connecting to contacts in your phone. Instagram wants you to be connected to these people as well. So they're gonna make it really easy. You can go ahead and search on the different functions in the settings on Instagram to connect with these other people you're already you know, connected with via Facebook or the contacts on your phone. But regardless, you wanna make sure that anybody who belongs in your database, you're following. This includes friends, family, past clients, prospective clients, and other business relationships, whether it's referral agents from different markets. I'm never afraid to follow other real estate agents. I think that's one of the most powerful parts of, of your audience on Instagram, to be honest, as well as other people who help support your business. So think lenders, title, inspection companies, cleaning companies. I mean, the list goes on. But anybody that you interact with on a regular basis, you need to be following first. Once you follow these individuals, the best thing that you can do is send them a direct message and kind of get in front of their radar. They're already gonna be notified if you're following them for the first time, but take it a step further by sending them a direct message and just saying, hey, so glad to connect with you here on Instagram. Feel free to follow me back, would love to stay in touch. And there you go. You've already started generating an audience on Instagram full of the right kinds of followers. People who already know you, like you, and trust you, and who want to support your business. This is the secret to a powerful Instagram presence. It's making sure that the people you're interacting with and engaging with actually have the power to help grow your real estate business. Okay, so we're not looking for quantity. We're not looking for 10,000 random followers. That's not the secret to success. The secret to success is having maybe a couple hundred or a couple thousand of the right followers on Instagram and going in deep with them. Okay, so now it's time for step five, but let's recap really quick. Okay, the first three steps are all about buttoning up your presence on Instagram and making sure your profile is ready and poised for growth. And then we start with following our database and engaging with our database there, because again, social media is just an extension of our database, database plan. We wanna make sure that we're including those people in our strategy so that we're top of mind and in front of them every single day. Now it's time to grow that audience and really put some pieces in place to make sure that we can do that over time. So there's a couple of things that you wanna do here in step five in order to grow your audience. You want to identify other businesses, influencers, and other hashtags on Instagram that have alignment with your database. Okay, so what does that mean? If we're gonna be successful on Instagram, we wanna be connecting with people who we know, like, and trust, and that's not just anybody. That has to be people who have interests that align with ours, values that align with ours, and who actually have the potential to buy or sell in our market. Okay, so that's interests, values, geographical terms that we're kind of trying to stay within. All right, and the best way to find more of those types of followers is to find the kind of content that those followers are constantly engaging with. So a lot of times this turns out to be 
businesses in your area who have really good Instagram presences already. Also other influencers in your area, so maybe local mommy bloggers, maybe it's local activity accounts. There's all kinds of different accounts on Instagram, but a lot of them can be local to your geographical market. You need to identify who those people are, what those accounts are, and you need to follow them as well. And then the same thing with hashtags. You can follow hashtags, and if you need a little help with hashtags, be sure to check out this video here. I do do a deep dive in that, which will help you get started there. But you should know that you can follow certain hashtags, and you should follow hashtags that are in alignment with your potential audience and that kind of intersect with where you're at ge geographically. So for example, I might follow, if I were doing this for myself, I might follow the most important businesses that share my interests and values and share the interests and values uh, with my audience. So for me, that's going to be some of the most popular restaurants and bars in the area, um, different things to do in the area and different mommy bloggers uh, that I know my audience tends to follow. Maybe different fitness accounts or hiking trail accounts that are big in, in my geographical area um, and here in Phoenix. I'm gonna go follow those people and I'm gonna be liking their posts and commenting on their posts as much as I possibly can to make sure that I'm showing up in front of their audience as well. I'm gonna do the same thing with the hashtags. So for me, for example, hashtags that I would follow might be moving to Arizona, moving to Phoenix, um, but I'm not gonna stop there and I'm not going to make this only real estate related hashtags because think about your audience. They're only concerned about real estate related topics when they are needing to buy or sell real estate but we wanna be relevant to them 100% of the time. So think about what your database and what your audience is likely interacting with on the account uh, or on Instagram and make sure you're following those hashtags as well. So for example, a couple of hashtags that seem to be in alignment with my audience might be DT Phoenix. So it's a geographical downtown Phoenix hashtag that kind of tags any content that people are posting in downtown Phoenix, where I tend to do a lot of business. Another hashtag I might follow is local AZ, which tends to include content posts by local businesses in Arizona. You need to do a little research there and again, check out that video that goes deep into hashtags that might help you out a little bit and stay away from hashtag real estate, hashtag realtor, because the only other people who are posting content on those hashtags are other real estate agents and realtors. We want to be in front of the people who need us, not the people who are us, right? So that is your step number five. You're going to go and find local businesses, local influencers, and other hashtags hashtags that have alignment with our audience that we're trying to grow. Once you've identified a good handful of these, every single day I want you to go on these accounts of the businesses and influencers and go through the hashtags and make sure you're interacting with content that's posted there as well. I'm talking likes, I'm talking comments, I'm talking showing up in the space as much as you can because you're A, getting in front of their audiences, so people are going to see you popping up on these accounts more often, which is really important, um, and B, you're telling the Instagram algorithm what your account is all about. And the more you do this, Instagram is going to be incentivized to suggest your account to others who have similar interests, and that is going to help grow your organic reach and your organic growth over time. And there you have it. Take those first five steps to creating a powerful machine on Instagram that's going to help you generate leads on demand. I know it sounds kind of simple, but it's really that simple. If you want to take your, your learning even further with Instagram for real estate, be sure to look at the links below because I have some great resources for you, uh, including your Instagram guide and my latest free masterclass where I'm dishing all the strategies that I'm using to grow on Instagram in 2020 for my real estate business. And I don't want you to miss out on those. And hey, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification icon because next week I'm going to be sharing step-by-step step what I'm doing every single day to help leverage this strategy and grow faster than ever before. And I don't want you to miss this. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, till next time, keep on crushing it.